ever glad to see you beautiful day morning. Thankful you could join us today. It is super sunny in Selkirk today. I'm absolutely loving it. Thank you for adding in where you're all joining in from. I hope you have the sun too where you are and it feels like a glorious Tuesday morning. My internet is lately been glorious. So if my slides load a little and work through this this morning, I am thrilled and honored that I get to talk to you about the power of positive thinking today because it truly does impact our, our work, our lives, our relationships. It's, it's an amazing, amazing tool, as it were, that we get to have with us. And sometimes we don't think about it. <laughs> um, okay, I'm getting a message here. I am going to work on two things in the background here to see if my audio quality can improve for you and you can hear all that we want to share today. Of course, you have joined us with Workplace Education Manitoba. We're thrilled you could join us because we love to help people develop essential skills that are needed for work, learning, and life. Our vision is really to take that all across the province. That's the goal, that every Manitoban has access to the essential, essential skills training that they need. Now, this is what we mean when we talk about nine essential skills. So... Today, we touch mostly on the thinking skill, but you'll see how you're able to take that and translate it into your working with others and oral communication skills also. Of course, we're coming to you from Selkirk. Our Interlake West Center is here, but good news, no matter where you are, we probably have a West Center within driving distance of you. So I encourage you to check out wem.mb.ca and Gail can pop that in the chat for you so that you can see and find a West Center near you. We do want to give a huge shout out to the funders. So thank you ESDC and Manitoba Education and Training, Human Resources, Skills Development Canada and Entrepreneurship Training and Trade. Without these funders, we wouldn't get to do this for free this morning. I mean, this training is cheaper than a latte. How amazing is that? So we are truly grateful that that has been provided for us. Now, when we talk about positive attitude, of course, we want to identify what it is, but why the heck would we want it? Why would we work for it? Because it doesn't just come naturally. We do have to work for it. And so if we understand some of the benefits and then do some of the tricks, hopefully we walk away with a tool that can truly change our work and our outlook to it and the results of it. A positive attitude is a belief that the best will happen and there will be a happy outcome and that you have some influence, control or power over the outcome. So recognizing that the attitude is not only tied to the outcome, it's even in the whole process. So generally speaking, this is a bit about being optimistic about situations, interactions, and yourself. Now, if you've ever had a bad morning, you know that it's not that easy to always be optimistic. You have to really dig, right? <laughs> so people with positive attitudes, they remain hopeful even in difficult situations. Now, the big white elephant in the room is that we're all in a difficult situation right now. <laughs> And what a difference it is when we face it with a positive attitude, even despite the difficulties. And you know, one fun free tip for you is to even when you're talking about the big white elephant pandemic that we're in, can you talk about it with a smile on your face? It's so interesting how your voice changes, your outlook changes when you just smile in the background, even when you're alone on the phone, adding the smile to it does affect your, out, your outlook. Now, contrasted to this, negative attitudes are more pessimistic and disagreeable, and they typically expect that only the worst is gonna happen. How many people, like show me that emoji button at the top of the screen, who works with 
a pessimist? <laughs> Sorry to ask you a negative, pessimistic question. We all have people who walk around with the gray cloud all the time, right? But I'll bet you also work with people who have positive attitudes. And that's even why you're here today, because you're you're one of the elite who are working to see things from a different perspective and to energize your workplace. But guess what? It has benefits that aren't just about work. It actually helps you cope more easily with daily life, brings optimism to your life, and I would even submit your relationships. And it makes it easier to avoid worries and negative thinking. In fact, <laughs> these constructive changes do actually bring success. There's research to back that up and also to back up what negative thinking can do. So decreases in performance, lack of collaboration, looking at things dismally, energy goes down, depression goes up, quality of work goes down, customer engagement goes down. So if just at the very, very surface level, we had to pick. <laughs> I think we all agree what we would pick, right? We know that negative thinking doesn't really solve a lot of problems. It doesn't really open up a lot of opportunities. So that part's somewhat obvious. But let's just look at like all the free benefits. <laughs> so it's like you get health and you get benefit and you get productivity. We're just throwing it out as all these benefits because there's tons of medical research on how optimism actually reduces risks of heart disease, stroke, and it actually helps with lung capacity and function, and even cancer and infection. So one of the latest studies that came out even linked optimism to a longer life. Now, hopefully you're so optimistic that you do want to live longer, okay? <laughs> that you do want more days. <laughs> Life's not so gray that you don't want to live. The study in proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found that people with higher levels of optimism also had a longer lifespan. So it's so interesting because if we talked about the negative effects of negativity, they decreased everything from workplace productivity to your life overall. And don't you see the connection too? That when we can add meaning and value to our work, it adds meaning and value to our lives. Even if we're doing a job we hate, I have, I have this, uh, this one friend who worked at a call center for quite a time. And she was the one who people would yell at. It was like, if you got someone really bad, pass the phone to her and she would deal with them. And she had this mission to turn people's attitudes around. And so every day when she went to work, instead of her thinking she was going to get yelled at, instead she thought, how many people do I get to turn their life around today? And guess what? She was so hugely successful in it and was rewarded all the time for her achievements. At work, a positive attitude definitely helps you overcome challenges, especially if you know you're in a job you hate, you have challenges, or you have the people under the gray cloud are the people on your team. <laughs> it's truly your secret weapon to be able to navigate through personal issues and interpersonal issues because positivity sets the stage for wanting a change, for wanting to solve a problem, as it were, and wanting those relationships to flourish. Now, the dividends at work, woohoo, increased productivity. We all love that, right? But look at the next one. I love the next one. There's a greater probability of collaboration and teamwork. Isn't that so true? I want to collaborate with the people who are positive. I want to be on their team. I, I want them to pick me for their baseball team because collaboration and teamwork is fun. Improved morale is the place we want to work at. And of course, it strengthens our ability to overcome obstacles because then we're willing to try. Then we're willing to reach. We're willing to share and have that true camaraderie. And oh man, camaraderie, let's just, you know, I just want to spend an hour talking about that, but don't worry, <laughs> I won't. <laughs> so understanding how really 
um, changing our thinking skills and increasing our self-management, it actually touches on a whole host of essential skills, which really can change our career trajectory and our outcomes at work. Now, examples of how to express a positive attitude, it's, it, sure, it's like smiling when you're on the phone with someone, like I mentioned, but there's real practical ways it unrolls. There's a whole aspect of self-reflection -re that comes to play, imagining outcomes, and, you know, pick one of these and grab onto it and just jot it down on your notepad. Which one of these do I want to be intentional about today? Is there someone I have a hard time working with? Today, I'm going to seek to understand them and where they're coming from and how they work. Or today, I'm going to work on looking to the past at what worked, what was positive, what did I learn from, what did I glean, and I'm going to apply that knowledge into my thinking framework for today. So let's all make a pact. Let's pick one of these as a practical, I will do this today. I already know which one I'm going to pick. All right. Love this, my my co-teacher often with us is a gal named Carrie. How about a thumbs up emoji if you've been under Carrie's training? Have you had the opportunity to be with her? Well, Carrie, this is just, this is just her. Positive mind, positive vibes, positive life. There's a connection. Our thinking leads to actions and changes our lifestyle. I love the positive vibes that you guys got to be under Carrie's teaching. And I stole that slide from her. And she's with us today, so that's pretty cool that she got to see that. So give yourself a litmus test here. Are you positive? Example, do you often talk about things you like? as opposed to what you dislike. <laughs> the old saying, is your glass half full or half empty? <laughs> you really can actually measure yourself. Now here's a question. When you think of your time on the job, what percentage of time do you think that you convey a positive attitude? Jot that down on your little pad of paper beside you. You're gonna need that number because you get homework today, guys. <laughs> So maybe you think, hey, 60% of the time I'm positive, 99% of the time I'm positive, 2%, whatever, you jot that number down. And here's why. Because for your homework, I want you to think about asking a colleague how they would measure you on that. So go to someone that you bump into day to day at work, or if you're working at home, the person that you're collaborating with digitally, and ask them, say, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think how I come off in the workplace. Do you think I convey a positive attitude? What percentage of time do you think I bring positivity to the workplace? And maybe they'll say, hey, yeah, about 90% of the time you're positive. Well, if they say 90, take 10% off, okay? They probably mean 80. It's a lot like your weight. How much do you think I weigh? I'll guess you'd weigh about 20 pounds less than what I actually think. <laughs> so compare these two numbers. You've got your number of how often you think you're positive, and you truly could be 100% of the time. But ask a colleague and see, do those numbers match? Because it's one thing living in your own head. It's another thing measuring that in terms of the impact. What do people feel when they're around you and on your team? And so knowing if if your number isn't the 100 percent or 90 or whatever you're aiming for, be asking about when I face the situations at work, do I assume the best or do I see the worst? And sorry to do this, but anyone out there who works with customers, I mean, I'm like totally talking to myself right now. In one of my other jobs, I work with customers and sometimes I get a recurring customer who's always negative and difficult. Well, when they walk through the door, what do I see? Do I assume it's gonna be bad? Or do I assume today's the day that this customer and worker relationship is gonna change? And can I turn it around for them? Can I deliver them the best service so they leave feeling honored and valued? So it's, uh, it's real life work to do that. When you think of your worst, your worst experience, and absolutely, Diane, 
man, I get to practice this day in and day out. I'm not, I'm not telling you that it ever ends. It takes work. <laughs> and do you know what season you're in right now? Did you used to be one way and now you're another way? Are you facing any challenges in front of you? Have you thought about, hey, what are my opportunities for growth? And that doesn't just mean training. That doesn't just mean, oh, I'll go take a course and then I'll grow. Sometimes our opportunities for growth are the obstacles in front of us and recognizing this is really hard. I don't like doing this and it's making me very uncomfortable. But I can imagine that once I conquer this, I'll have a new skill. So just, you know, knowing your season, knowing your perspective and what's in front of you that's challenging you. And then asking, what's the impact of being positive on my own motivation and my own self-confidence? This is a really important one and probably you want to jot down because if we could go deeper than a 30-minute tidbit today, <laughs> this is one we'd camp out on because your story would be slightly different than mine and we'd have some things in common about how positivity does motivate you but we have such real life examples that are really, really wide. So I encourage you to reflect on this question when you pour your refill cup of coffee after our session ends today. Benefits of your belief in your ability to do, do a job well. So see the difference? There's me looking at a customer, hoping I can change their perspective but also having positivity in my own ability that I'll be able to do the job well. I'm not assuming the worst of it. And then it strengthens my skill to actually be able to do it. You do build trust in yourself and other people. You stop wasting time on the blame game. <laughs> and, and it can open up opportunity that you'd be willing to take a risk because sometimes when we see a risk, we think what could go wrong? And sometimes when we see a risk, we think, hey, what could go right? What could be so great about this? And then, of course, hopefully you smile more often. And the smile more often is a little bit like the chicken and the egg. <laughs> if you smile, it helps affect your positive attitude. If you have a positive attitude, it helps make you smile. So one fun fact I learned recently is, did you know I know you know that laughter affects us in a positive way and it even has health benefits to be able to laugh. But did you know that even fake laughter helps? Seriously, this blew my mind. Someone was telling me this recently. They actually did the research, not me. But um, even if you cannot laugh about something and you do your fake laughter, even that produces benefits and helps you, yes, even with your yoga laughter, because that will change some wires and chemicals in your brain. So referring back to my friend um, at the call center, one thing interesting about that is everyone at the call center was trying to earn the perks. And she kept earning the perks. She would get these gift cards and bonuses and things at work. And everyone wanted to meet those, those achievements. And not many believed that the difference was before she picked up the phone, she'd smile. And that little bit of internal laughter before you even have the conversation actually can be linked to achievement, especially in a job like that. Now, teammates that are positive, they reduce the stress of the group. I love being around less stress, right? Like, it, the older I get, the more I value that. <laughs> it certainly builds trust because one thing that positivity does is even if you don't know exactly how the outcome is going to go, it's, hey, we're in this together. I've got your back, you've got mine, and at the end of the day, we're gonna laugh about this. It brings that cooperation and problem solving. And of course, you'll keep good people if they can work in an environment that's positive. And again, touching on that intrinsic motivation, something almost magical happens when we're able to tap into positive thinking because it affects us on the inside. 
And then here's what your company loves about it. <laughs> this is what your boss loves about positivity. <laughs> when you can think and act positively, you end up making a great impression for the company. What if you're wearing the company logo on your jacket <laughs> and you're like growling like a bear? You're not making even a great impression for the company. So this is the dividends to the organization that they totally appreciate and they can't really mandate it, but they certainly do reward it. Of course, other people also choose to be on your team and that's not just a teammate wanting to work on a project, that's sometimes vendors. A lot of vendors don't need your business and they pick and choose who they'll do relationships with. So recognizing that it could even open up suppliers and networks for you just by how you speak. Productivity in the workplace is always championed by employers and they've recognized that positive people are even easier to manage. There's less meetings of being dominated by complaining and more opportunities for productivity which helps us problem solve. We just did a workshop yesterday about problem solving. And the thing about problem solving is you have to have a reason to want to solve the problem. The problem itself isn't usually worth the energy. There's usually an underlying benefit to working through the tough stuff. And positivity research shows that positive people tend to be the ones able to stick it out and find solutions. So when that manifests on a team, at the end of the day, the creative thinking gets energized because an atmosphere has happened, an attitude has happened of happiness. And you know this for whoever you live with or hang out with the most, <clears throat> you know that we all have the road bump times, but generally speaking, the people who are only negative they repel, they don't draw in. People tend to wanna to be around and involved in the attitude of happiness. And I have a sad story for you. Can I, can I tell you a sad story? I mean, it wouldn't be happy if we couldn't also talk about sad. <laughs> I had this lovely relative who wasn't so lovely. They just thrived in negativity. I think they were addicted to negativity. It was their best friend. And we used to have this dinner group that would go out, a group of relatives, we'd try a new restaurant. Oh, remember when we could go to restaurants? <laughs> well, it was fun and we would try new restaurants that would just challenge our palates and it was super cool. But after about a year of doing this, once a month, we recognized like negative Nelly complained at every single restaurant and sent her food back at every single restaurant and we were embarrassed because not all the restaurant owners could compare notes that this happened everywhere we went but we realized like it actually got embarrassing to dine out because it was affecting our reputation because someone could not find one redemptive thing and i'm sorry if you've been to 12 restaurants <laughs> <laughs> and you can't find one positive thing about it. You need, you know, you need a time in the wilderness to sort that out because the attitude of happiness creates an environment that other people want to be around. And in the workplace, it pushes us to new heights. It pushes us not in a, a drudgery way. It pushes us in an exciting way to say, hey, what could happen if we did something different? What could happen if we tackled this? Now, personal story. When my daughter was four years old, she had an older brother who could skate like super amazing. And she was determined to learn how to skate too. But it didn't come naturally to her. Which is sort of funny because now it's extremely natural to her and she's probably the best skater in the house. But at the time, she was just all clumsy. And she had tears coming down to her face in one of her lessons. And we weren't making her do this. She just was determined to do this. And I got down on the ice really low to her. And I was like, are you sure you want to do this? Little crocodile tears coming down. And she's singing. I'm like, what are you singing? Mom, 
never give up, never, 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 I'm never going to give up. Now, this song didn't exist. She wrote it in her tears on the ice. <laughs> she found a little tune and just started singing, I'm never going to give up. I could just cry just telling you about it. <laughs> but man, that girl now, she only had to make it through like, you know, five or ten really painful lessons to get to the point where she didn't have to sing the Never Give Up song anymore. So getting through the, the hard part with positivity, even if there's a tear silently coming down your face, even an imaginary tear <laughs> coming down your face, it's recognizing it probably won't always be that way. It's just that way right now. So if you find you've been going through that and experiencing that, you get to decide to make a change. You get to, to decide to plant a new seed. And where the heck would I even start with this? Do I just start singing that little girl's song, Never Give Up? Well, that's one place. <laughs> but why don't you start a gratitude journal? You know, tons of people do gratitude journals in life, but why not one for work? We're taught at work that we need to document the conflicts. We need to document different legal situations that are happening. But why don't we ever write down the positives? Just keep a little spot, whether it's digital or on paper, but write down some of the wins. When you meet the deadline, that goes on the list. When a coworker gets promoted, that goes on the list. When you didn't throw your computer across the room, it goes on the list. Hopefully none of you actually do that. <laughs> um, but just challenge your thinking. And this is something you can even share. When you start thinking about work-related gratitude, this is the stuff that goes into people's personnel files. This is the positive feedback you email to companies to let them know you're giving them a pat on the back. Of course, challenging your own beliefs too. Do you really believe you could achieve? Do you really believe you're responsible? Even if you're in the most negative workplace, do you believe that secretly in your own heart, you are able to generate positive thinking and to make a change in the little part of the world that you own? So owning your own beliefs, no one else is responsible for them. They're your own and no one can take those from you. And probably the most practical <laughs> is staying out of the pit. Don't go in the pit. And, you know, Mark had put in the chat that sometimes negativity comes because people weren't heard at work. And it's so true. When we, when we can hear from people and empower them, it changes them to be a positive, energized worker. And so let's put those in the right channels that we're able to help someone work through and give them a hearing place, but not in the gossip pit place. So sometimes that's even putting up a boundary that feels super totally awkward where you have to say, you know what, I'd rather not talk about this or I, I can't talk about that. And you decline a time or two and they'll find someone else to go into the pit with. So this is one to really be aware of because if you find that on a Monday morning, someone's throwing up all over you verbally about how awful their weekend was and how they hate being at work that morning, <laughs> you might need to just avoid a gossip pit a time or two. So I do encourage you, I give you a few things to write down today after we are done today. And I encourage you just to give yourself that time of reflection because chances are there was a time you were very positive about the opportunity to work at the company you're working at right now, or just to join the workforce. You know, young people are so excited to join the workforce and try something new. So reflect on with gratitude what that looked like for you in the past and what that looks like going forward. Now, if you think you're a positive thinker who's willing to put in some of these strategies, there's always more opportunities for you. Now, they're not all with us. There's tons of opportunities around. I just get to shine the spotlight on the ones we're doing. So coming up in January, if you want to take this positivity and attach it to how you communicate at work, then join us for our January seminar. 
If you want to take the concepts of self-management to the next level and really rise up in a place of leadership, whether they appoint you to that in your job or you're striving to grow as a leader, then join us for our eight sessions seminar workshop series that's coming up starting in February. You can always register for those on our website. And at the end of the day, I guess what I want to encourage you all to think is, sorry, this slide's about more opportunities that Workplace Education Manitoba can provide for you. And we can come to your workplace even via Zoom and be able to do custom training for you. Um, but at the end of the day today, one of the things that's the most powerful, absolute life changer thing about positive thinking is the ability to share it. So our mission today is not just to walk away and use some of the tips and tricks selfishly for ourselves, but our mission today is to go off and to share this with someone else in a way that can inspire them. So we'll take something we know, a word of encouragement or a word of gratitude, and we'll share it with someone else so that we can plant a seed of positive thinking in a coworker's life also. Now I wanna thank you for joining us, you guys, I loved the emojis today. We're so glad you'd spend a Tuesday morning with us. And my hope for you is that you just have the best day ever. And whoever works next to you, they get the best day ever too. And it keeps getting paid forward. Thanks. Have a happy Tuesday. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.